Hello and welcome back to the workshop. In this episode, we fit a motor to the bottom of my bandsaw. So this is the motor we're gonna fit up. It's a face mount motor, so we need to adapt this to fit on the flat wooden plate that forms the, the motor support on the frame of the bandsaw. And you would have seen this piece of steel in previous, maybe one or two previous episodes. This was rusty, I've just given this a clean up. So the plan is to relieve the bottom portion of this so that this disc can sit down into that because we've got very little headroom um, underneath the frame of the motor. So this is, I couldn't go any larger than this. And in fact, this, this uh, outer rim will have to sit nearly down to that plate for it to work. So you can imagine we need some mounting holes on a bolt pattern for these screws. And we need a clearance hole in the middle and I think I want to put some slotted, slotted um, holes here so that this can move sideways to tension the belt. When it comes to fitting this to the frame, I've got a few options. My initial thoughts were I'd use this style of um, threaded insert, which you, you put a nut on the, on the uh, screw and you thread this outer into the wood. It's basically got a machine screw fitting that you can use and reuse without it wearing out. And you can get them with or without these uh, flanges. Now these, these uh, screws, since I'm only gonna have two screws mounting this, those are a bit undersized. I'd really like M10 or above. But in, in M10, the only kind of sort of threaded inserts I've got are these style, which don't really work in this situation. One option I've got would be to drill an oversized hole grind some notches in here for some physical holding power, mechanical holding power, and then epoxy these into those holes with uh, greased threads and uh, some kind of plug in the end. So they can be pushed in, let set, let set, and then used as kind of a threaded insert. Or I could just use lag screws, or I could cut the head off an existing bolt and put studs in the frame and still slot these. I'm not sure yet, but as you can see, there's a few options and we'll figure that out when the time comes. But I think we can make a start, whatever we do, we can make a start with this relieving um, the clearance hole, the four mounting holes, and maybe I'll even mill, mill a radius onto this piece just to make it fit that diameter. That'd be nice. So this motor has to sit down through the bottom of the foot of that angle and that foot is about 15 odd thick. So if we call it 16, we're erring on the side of caution. Our, um, our motor plate, the end of the motor is 215 diameter. So this forms a little triangle. If we knock the 16 off the radius, we get this number. If we take the radius here, using Pythag, we can come up with this, this length for this side of the triangle. And if we double that, and round it up for a little bit more airing on the side of caution. If we make a, a cut through here that's 113 wide, we should have clearance on this corner for the motor plate. And it leaves us plenty of meat for, these, for the, uh, for the um, bracket to be bolted down to the frame of the bandsaw. Of course, if you absolutely hate maths and you like the uh, direct empirical way, you can just line this up, eyeball a, an intersection point where the two parts would meet. Run a ruler across it. And that measures something like 107. And that's, if you add it on a few mil each side for clearance like we did in our calculations, you'd end up with the same number. <laughs> 